to 55. And it does read, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, and the last trump from the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible, corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, that death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Here in the reading of the Holy Word. Before I do this item, I'd just like to say thanks to everyone who is here. And we have family members who, are, who should be online as well. And just want to say thanks to the Grace Community Church in London and to the Robinsons family in London as well. And for the Mitchell and everyone and that are present here and those who are online. Um, this song touches my heart and it says something about my, my sister's situation and what she was going through. And it's a song that really encouraged me and I'm hoping that you all will be encouraged by it. But um, since my sister died, it takes something from me and it affects the way I sing, so I do hope that I'm able to do justice to this song. Thank you. broken than whole when the wounds go deeper than words and you can tell us all I may not know what you're going through may not can make that high mountain move but one thing I found and I really want you to know if it matters to you, it matters to the master. He wants to share the burdens you bear. Whisper peace when your words get shattered. If it's your greatest joy or your deepest pain, all you really need is an answer. If it matters to you, it matters to the master. Friends, do you think the maker and giver of life is far too busy to care about your trouble and strife. He sees the sparrow that falls to the ground and he hears the tears that don't make a sound. If you only knew how precious you are in his sight. If it matters to you, it matters to the master. He wants
wants to share the burdens you bear. Whisper peace when your world gets shattered. If it's your greatest joy or your deepest pain, or you really need an answer, if it matters to you, it matters to the master. Continue with the second lesson. We take it round by Clement Cohen. Thessalonians 4 verses 13 onward and it reads thus but I would not have you to be ignorant brethren concerning them which are asleep that we sorrow not even as others which have no hope for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which are asleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with the Lord in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord therefore comfort one another with these words here in the reading of God's holy word Shall we praise the Lord again, beloved? It's indeed a sad occasion for us to meet like this. But indeed we know that we serve a God who gives comfort. We serve a God who cares. And I just want you to know that he loves you. So with this in mind, I say on behalf of our senior pastor, Pastor Franklin Brown, and all the elders of the Old Arbor Church and officers and members, I just want to express sincere condolences to the family of the late Andrea Robinson Preston. We pray that the Spirit of the Lord will continue to be with you and to give you the strength 
to go on through this difficult time. And we continue to encourage you to be strong in the Lord. God bless you. have now come to the pre homily the fact that um, our past the pastor will have to leave uh, for another engagement so um, that's why he's not going to come at the end of the program but he'll come in a short while from now and so um, at this time we are going to ask the Old Harbor Seventh-day Adventist Choir to come and render their high temp. Um, okay, okay. Um, before the choir sings, um, we have with us this morning or this afternoon our Pastor Valentine. Pastor Valentine is a son of Old Harbor. Um, he now pastors in a different area, and he is one who is a very faithful servant of God. He has a young family, and um, he's always ready when called upon to do anything for the Lord. And uh, this afternoon or this morning, we just want to present this servant of God to you and ask that you'll sit back, just relax, and listen as he present the word of God to us. But before he sings, he comes, then the choir will do this preomily song. Remember and sang again.
reminded by the choir that God is able. The Robinsons are a singing family. I know today their heart overcome with sorrow, but I pray the Almighty God, the songs you sung all those years, they will come back to you today as a blessing. We're here to ask God for help and strength collectively. What is a funeral service? Why are we here? If you live long enough, you'll go to a funeral service. And if you live long enough, you'll see loved ones pass away. But God in his mercy, he, he saw his son on this earth growing and blooming and he saw his son cried out my God my God why hast thou forsaken me God knows our questions God has an answer what I want to say from the onset the old song says by and by by and by loving father in heaven we come before you this morning we come once again God to look to you we have no help no hope there's nothing for us to hold on that can support us at this time but rejoice that you are a present help rejoice that you said you'll never leave nor forsake draw close to the robinson's father draw close to mourner's master and may we find hope and help as only you can give in jesus name Amen. Years ago, a friend of mine we were traveling to St. Mary. And in the junction, we passed a group of animated children waving. They were obviously trying to get our attention. I alerted my friend to the children. He shoved them off. And onward he sped only to be faced by this expanse of brown water not going anywhere. They were telling us something, but he failed to accept the message. That as a, a way to cause us to accept one message or the other. The great question today as we mourn the loss of Andrea Preston Nee Robinson. The great question is, will we accept the message from God today? He says clearly in Psalm 90, there are three square years and ten, and if by reason of strength they prolong, be aware, certainly pain comes. But God in his mercy, he who gives life he presides over life, and God knows all things, and we are safe in his hand. He says to all of us today, to the Robinsons, remember, remember scriptures. He says, don't mourn as others. Who are the others that mourn? Here God presents two groups of mourners. One who mourn without hope, because all we can think of if you're in that group all you can think of is tomorrow where that loved one will be. But God cautions and points out there is a benefit to placing our lives in a life in the hands of Jesus. He says don't mourn as others who have no hope. But we believe even as Andrea serve our God, the affairs of God, affairs of man rather, lie with God. So often at funeral, persons get out the calculator trying to check up. This is one time calculators can't help us. The merciful God who keeps, the one who guides, God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. The God, which God is that? The God who numbers the very hairs of our head. The God in whom we live and have our being. But he asks the question, what is man? What is man? 
today bright and blooming and tomorrow not. What is mine? But God answers the question. Some might ask, who is Andrea? God's child. God says, man fearfully and wonderfully made. God says, made a little lower than the angel. What has God done for that man? God has made man and has provided for man hope and help. And God says to you and I, look unto me and be saved. Why we have all these questions? Because God knows he has not permitted no one to see beyond the grave. Forget the dreams. Forget what you have read elsewhere. God in his mercy, he has shielded us. And he has given us hope and faith. That as we live our lives, we can have hope in Jesus. What about this hope, you might say, Pastor Valentine? We have hope that indeed as God makes it clear... One day when the dead will indeed rise, the sea will give up the dead. Everyone who has served God will find God faithful. But today, many will have questions what God says to someone. Live this life. Romans 12, 17. Be patient in tribulation. Be what? Patient in tribulation. Why? You see, it's not any meaning mine anymore. God in his mercy, the same God who allowed Jesus to die, God has not spared his loved one from the worst things. Someone believed that since I'm a Christian, my life will be so glorious. I'll be rafting down life with a coconut in my hand and a straw hot hand. Not so. God has not placed his children in a cocoon. God has not placed you and I in a greenhouse. God has indeed in his mercy given you and I life and he asks you and I, what will you do with this life? We can choose to serve God and we can choose to ignore him. But please remember, remember each man will have to give account. But as we trust and serve God, as we trust and serve God, God is faithful. The same God who sends rain and the just, Matthew 5, 15, and on the unjust, is the same God who watches over our steps, and he does it so you and I have an opportunity to call him Lord and God. How much time do we have for this? Psalm 90 says, three score years and ten. But if I do the math, there's no three score years and ten here. There's none. But don't be discouraged. God had a friend. Indeed, Lazarus died early. And someone today in the midst of mourning, someone who said truly Andrea was a young woman. Yes, but there's one who called Jesus, who prepared the way for Jesus, and he died early. Therefore, there's no guarantee about life. The only guarantee we have, if we make Jesus our Lord and Savior, let the winds blow, let the storm come, let trouble and destruction come, because one day, I will stand on the sea of glass. The old saying said, learn to dance a yard before you dance abroad. When Christ comes, everything will be over. But today he says to someone, find me your hope, find me your help. Will you trust God today? Why would I trust God, someone might ask. Why would I trust him? Because St. John 14 says, let not your heart be troubled. So Lord, what should I do when there's trouble and trials? What should I do? When I've served you, I've given you my life, but yet still life hasn't turned out how I expected. What should I do? Trust me more. Because one day, and we live with this text. We live in this text. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 18 says, Comfort one another with these words. What are the words? That one day God will come again. 
Shortcut. Shortcut is sweet, but it's always dangerous. Don't shortcut eternity today by living away from God. God calls you and I. Why calls you and I? Because having made us Lord and angel, he has reserved for you and I a place in heaven. And indeed, we have only heaven to tell you about. And don't get impatient about heaven. God is waiting for someone yet to accept him. And God is long in patience because he rather not a debt of us sinners. Oh, Pastor Valentine, can't you tell us nice things? You know, I've seen many funerals and the men go and drown themselves in the alcohol. Guess what? Drunk or sober, you can't shake death. One thing we can do with death to accept that God grants life and when you and I give our hearts to him, you and I will find God a resting place. How can I have that life, someone might ask? How can I have that life, Pastor Valentine? How can I have eternal life? Because Christian die. The most diabolic man dies. How can I have eternal life? Come with me to Matthew. This young man came to Jesus. He says, good master, good master, what should I do to inherit eternal life? You say, pastor, I'm not sure about eternal life. Everywhere that man dwells on this earth, every culture believes in eternal life. Don't make yourself the exception. Because they learn about eternal life. When God spoke to Adam and Eve face to face, God shared with man the plan of redemption. And ever since, every family of man, however far we have dispersed, man knows there's a God. Man knows the eternal life. And God says, indeed, I will give you this life. So he comes to Jesus. What good thing should I do? And Jesus told him, keep the commandments. He says, which one? And he began to name them, name them, name them. Then Christ listened and asked him to do something. For him, Christ says, go and sell your goods and give the poor. But for you here today, today, some of us don't have a second dime in our pocket. Therefore, Christ will not tell us that. Some of us, our pockets are laden, but it still does not provide for us any obstacle to God. Let me go slow. Some are rich and serve God. Some are poor and serve God. But each man, God says, take up your cross and follow me. And why many enter into this time of mourning and sorrow without hope? Because why we could have accepted Jesus and taken up the cross. We said, Jesus, I don't want this cross. I don't want this cross. Just as he told the rich young ruler, this is your cross you must bear. He says to every worshiper here this morning, there's a cross you must bear, and cross are not for wearing around the neck. Cross means dead. Because when you and I take up that cross, the sinful man will die, and the spiritual man will grow. He asks God, what should I do? Today God asks you and I to serve him. What will our end be? Some will live to see Christ come in his glory. But someone should know today, today, someone should know today that the earth's time is wrapping up fast. Here, Daniel 14, 2,300 days then shall a sanctuary be cleansed. Which sanctuary? Indeed, God has made it clear. There's a sanctuary in heaven. And when the sanctuary is cleansed, well, that means God has finished all his work of forgiving sins. Then he will declare, he that is just, let him be just still. And he that is filthy, let him be filthy still. And herein lies the opportunities. Some are making like a child playing in the rain. No, 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 no. But after the rain, something comes. After this time of probation, each man must give an account for himself. Why will we give an account? Because as we serve God here, God is a faithful reward of them who serve him. Why should I serve God? 
because nothing can stop death. Only God himself can stop death. Why should I serve God? With all we do or say, one day, you and I, I said maybe. I said what? Maybe. Because some will live to see Christ coming. If we don't live to see Christ coming, all of us here will go there. But God is coming. How soon will he come, Pastor Valentine? We know not for certain. But the Bible makes it clear as he cleanses the temple, when this is finished, he will come. And he has told us clearly, Matthew 24, he told us clearly when that time happens, he's returning and the bell is ringing loudly. Get ready to meet your God. Oh, Pastor, I was serving Jesus, but I got distracted. I was serving Jesus, but I turned back. Here, Proverbs 24, 16, somebody, somebody who came to support the Robinson's family, someone who knows one of his sons, the sons or the daughters, here, somebody, God says in Proverbs 24, 16, the just man fought what? Seven times, therefore, you and I can get up. No need to remain where you are. Get up. But there are some who, Revelation 28, 21 says, verse 8, who are fearful and unbelieving. God says, I have not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. When God returns, those who are righteous will hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And God is not like man, Somebody retain your memory, read Matthew 20. If you forget everything I say, read Matthew 20. In this account, as we grapple with the sudden loss of Andrea, as we grapple with the shortness of her life, read Matthew 20. Here God makes a clear case that each man can understand. The Bible presents that indeed the master went out in the morning and he sought for workers. He found some workers. He says, go in my field today. They went. He went out 9 o'clock then, the third hour. He found some more and he says, go in my field. And they went. And he kept going and going. And they went, Georgia. And they went. They went. And when evening was come, when the regular plan of life means work is literally over, guess what the master did? He went back searching. Some of you here today are not young like myself. Some of you have lived your life apart from God. But you know by the hear and the pain, and the calendar, you know you are close to the streets for years and ten. What will you do with the remaining time? Don't allow anyone to say you have wasted your time. No, read Matthew 20. So the good master, the same master who called Samuel before he had sent, the same master came back in the parable and he called those who were there in the tenth hour. What are you doing here? No man call us to work. He says, go in my vineyard. And aha, no was draft time. That term is no longer popular, but years ago when we had all the factories in Old Harbor, 